Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm on a fantabulous weight loss journey and hopefully you'll come along for the ride. So in today's video, I wanted to read a comment for you that came from one of the support groups. And I think that it touches on something that is extremely important about kind of the process that we go through on these GLP-1 meds. So let's jump right into it. So I'm gonna read it for you here. Anyone else notice with food noise gone, the desire to eat is gone, meaning I no longer feel joy or excitement about a good meal or my favorite foods. I never really noticed before how much of my life centered around food and how much joy I ascribed it. With that gone, I feel kind of depressed. So, I want to break this into a couple of different points, but before I do, I just want to mention that if you are experiencing depression of any kind, you should 100% speak to your doctor. I am not a doctor, this is not medical advice, but I have gone through this, and so I want to talk about my experience to try to offer some support for others who may be feeling this and let you know that there is a way through this and there is light at the end of the tunnel. So don't give up hope. The first point that this commenter made about the food noise being gone and I no longer feel joy or excitement about a good meal or my favorite foods. So this is something that I experienced very early on in my GLP-1 journey. And part of it is because of the medication and how it works on our brain. And part of it is realizing how much our entire social construct is centered around food. And it has been, right, since the beginning of time. You know, people gathered to eat, um, people shared meals, there are entire holidays centered around it, right? It's very much ingrained in us from a very, very young age that the meal is what's important. So this is something that people experience and it can be very jarring because you don't realize how much that food noise was driving you. And if you don't know what food noise is, definitely go check out my food noise video where I talk about it in depth. Um, but it, it's, it runs your whole life, right? And then we have this social construct that reinforces that food noise, right? We're constantly being bombarded with ads about food and fast food, and we're constantly watching recipe videos on TikTok and YouTube. And it's, it's just further cementing that in our minds that that is where the joy is. Now, there is a certain level of satisfaction, enjoyment, excitement surrounded around our favorite foods, right? Um, and again, that all happens in the brain. So when you're on these medications and you no longer have that, especially if you were someone like myself who was using food as an emotional crutch, either for your highs, right? you know, sharing a meal with friends, family, you know, having a treat, right? Or even your lows where you're, you know, like I was doing, binging, eating calorie dense foods and really just struggling with food in general. When you're put into a situation and you weren't expecting to come to that realization on this journey, which I, I have never heard, of anyone's doctor warning them about this, it can be very jarring. And it's something that you have to work through on your own. And it's one of the main reasons why I tell people that I feel like with these medications that therapy should be required, at least for a certain amount of time. Because just like with weight loss surgery, right, there's a certain amount of therapy that's required. 
it's essentially the, the same goal, right? We're trying to better our health and better our life. And there's a huge psychological component here that people struggle with on their own and can be very challenging. So one thing that I wanted to mention is when people have this realization, it can be overwhelming. It can feel like, what do I do now? What, what do I do? Right? Especially for people, again, like myself, who would eat out of boredom, eat when they're sad, eat when they're happy. Now what? Now how do I deal with stress? Now how do I deal with not being excited about my favorite foods? And I just want to say that as you continue on this journey, those feelings kind of level out. It's not something that consumes you all the time forever, right? Especially to the level of being depressed. I think that the initial realization can be very jarring, right? We've been told all our lives that food is, you know, that's important. And so there's a mind shift that takes place when you're on these medications and you really have to learn, okay, if you're somebody who eats out of boredom, you have to learn how to recognize that and then decide how you're going to address it. So for example, um, this is something that I have struggled with. And one thing that works really well for me because I have ADD and I'm a procrastinator is I will in that moment go and clean something. If it's at my desk at work, I'll clean up my desk, take five minutes, clean up my desk. If it's, you know, later on in the evening, I'll do, you know, do some dishes. I'll do a load of laundry. I'll go into my closet and look at my clothes and decide, okay, this is too big for me. Is this something that I want to keep or is this something I could donate? And I'll make a pile, right, to then go through and donate at a later time. So I find something to do, not only to deal with the emotions of that moment, but also to help kind of reroute my thought process from, I'm bored, I need to eat. I'm sad, I need to eat. I'm happy, I need to eat, right? And a lot of what the appetite suppression and increased satiety does for us on this medication is it allows our brain to take back over. We're not being driven solely by that food noise. We can take a step back and say, wow, I'm really stressed and I'm really sad and I don't know what to do with myself. Now, cleaning may not be the answer for you. Maybe you decide that um, you're going to get a new book. You're going to find a new book online and order it to read it to your kids. Maybe you decide that, um, you know, you've really been meaning to go into your pantry and uh, do an inventory so that you can better work on your grocery budget. Maybe you decide that you're going to go outside and throw the Frisbee for the dogs, which is one of my personal favorites. Whatever you decide to do, when you look back on that moment after it's passed and you've started to feel better because you've done this other activity, you're going to feel good about those choices, right? Because the old you would have just eaten a bunch of food had a snack multiple times a day, right? Maybe made an unhealthy choice, but now you're working on changing that mindset and it doesn't happen overnight. And I cannot stress that to you enough. I have been on this medication for almost eight months now and there are still times when this comes up. I was recently dealing with a lot of stress and I... You know, I told my spouse, I was like, I am really overwhelmed in this moment 
and I don't know what to do because old me would have just ordered McDonald's, gorged, and had that serotonin release and felt better. But I don't do that anymore. Now what do I do? So don't count yourself out and don't count out the people around you to rally behind you and say, hey, I'm struggling in this moment. Can you help me? Because if they love you and they care about you, they're, they're going to try to help, right? And they may offer you a suggestion or an alternative that you may not have thought of before. Now, when I spoke earlier, I was talking about how this feeling doesn't last forever, right? That initial kind of sadness, depression, realization of how much food was running your life. It, it doesn't last forever. For, blah, 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 blah. Forever. Um, as you continue to work through it, it happens less and less, right? Because again, we're, we're working on that brain. We're, we're finding other activities to do. And the joy of your favorite foods comes back because you have a new appreciation for them that I cannot describe to you. You just have to feel it on your own. Because when you have those foods, it's going to be because you chose to have them, whatever they may be, whether it's fast food or sushi or um, going to a buffet, what, whatever the case may be, Thanksgiving meal, when you have those foods and you tackle that interaction with a completely new mindset of not being controlled by food, it gives you a whole new level of joy and excitement and you feel accomplished and successful on your journey every single time. So, I know that it can be hard to go through these things. And for many of us, you know, we're not telling people that we're on a GLP-1 because we're concerned about backlash. So having a positive support community is very important. And if that's something that you're looking for, the link to my group, it's a positive only group, is in the description box below. Um, you are not alone. You're not the only person feeling this way. And you're not the only person who's had to deal with the realization of food absolutely running your entire life. Before I started this GLP-1 journey, I used to watch predominantly Food Network, cooking shows, cooking channels on YouTube of various ethnicities, I was blowing out my grocery budget, making new recipes, you know, every day, chasing that high from food. And when you're able to move through that, as time goes on, everything gets better. So I, I just wanted to come on and give you a little bit of my experience and let you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you will get there if you do the work. I know it's hard, I know it's challenging, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because you are worth it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the ride. And if you're looking for that positive only support group, don't forget the link is in the description box below. And as always, be kind, rewind.